So this week we are going to make 16 of these two color squares. It will look something like this. You will need to have colors A and F to make these squares. So taking A, we will start either with a magic ring or if you prefer, we can chain four slip stitch into the first chain to form a ring. Starting with round one, this will be the wrong side. We will chain three to start and then put two double crochet into the ring. chain two and work three more double crochet into the ring one two and three now on this last or this third double crochet we're going to drop color a take color b to finish the stitch and i just like to tighten up color a So it's color F we've joined, chain two. Now, since this is the wrong side facing, I want to make sure that my tails and my dropped color A are laying towards me on the front of what is facing because this is the wrong side. So I'm still going to work over my first tail of A and the tail of F that I've just joined, but I don't want to work over the working yarn of color A. So into the circle, we will place three double crochet. Chain two three more double crochet. Now instead of chaining two, we're going to join to the top of our, of our starting chain three with a half double crochet. So in the third chain of the starting half double crochet, we'll work a half double, which acts as a chain two space. We'll turn our work. So now it's right side facing to begin round two. We'll chain three, and we want to work a double crochet into that space that we created with the half double crochet. double crochet in each of these three stitches. And then in the corner space, we'll work two double crochet, chain two, and two more double crochet in that same corner space. Double crochet in the next three stitches. Two and three. And then in that corner space, we will place two double crochet. On the second double crochet, we're going to drop color F to the back pick up our color A to finish the stitch, chain two, so chain two with A and then into the space we will place two double crochet, which finishes that corner, the two double crochet of F, chain two, two double crochet of A. Double crochet in each 
of these three stitches. And then in the corner, two double crochet. chain two, two double crochet. Double crochet in the three stitches. So that's a double crochet in each of the two doubles. And then double crochet in the top of the chain three. You can work beside where that half double crochet is joined, or if you can find the space just under the half double crochet, I find that's a little neater finish. And then in the corner, we'll place those two double crochet. And then we'll join with a half double crochet to the top of the beginning chain three. So there should be 28 double crochet this round. And then we'll turn, so this is wrong side facing again, and work round three. So we chain three, place a double crochet in this space that was created with the half double crochet double crochet in each of the next seven stitches. One, two. Six and seven double crochet. And then in the corner space, two double crochet. Chain two, two double crochet. And again, we'll work a double crochet in each of the seven stitches. six and seven and then into the corner we'll place two double crochet and then on this last stitch we're going to drop a so bringing that to the front again because this is the wrong side picking up color f to finish that double crochet and then work the chain two and then careful not to work over F, we'll place two more double crochet in this corner space. And I like to work over that carried yarn a bit. And then double crochet in the seven. Make our corner stitches, the two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. Double crochet in seven, six and seven and again and that's that chain three if you can work under that half double and then we want to place two double crochet in that corner stitch and join with a half double crochet to the top of our chain three 
which ends round three with 44 double crochet. So for round four, we will turn, this is right side facing again. Continuing with F, we will chain three, work a double crochet in this corner space. Then we'll work a double crochet in all 11 stitches across the top. The corner stitches, two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, double crochet in the 11 stitches. And I'll join you over at this corner to change colors. So I've worked the two sides, the crochet in 11, the corner stitches, double crochet in 11 stitches. We want to put two more double crochet in this corner. On the second double crochet, we will drop F, grab color A to finish that stitch, chain two, two more double crochet in that same corner space. Then double crochet in 11, work our corner stitches, double crochet in 11, and I'll join you at that spot. So once you've worked those 11 double crochet, the corner stitches and 11 double crochet with A, we'll place two more double crochet in that first corner space. And then work that half double crochet to join to the top of the starting chain three, and then we can go ahead and fasten off. 60 double crochet. Now you do want to be sure to measure your first square. It needs to be five inches so that it will fit across the bottom of your blanket. We're going to be joining these squares together in a certain arrangement. There will be two rows of eight squares, so you want to make sure that eight squares measure the distance or the width of your blanket. So be sure to measure that. If your square is too large, you can tighten up your tension or use a smaller size hook. If your square isn't large enough, you can do the opposite and loosen your tension or use a larger hook to obtain the correct size. You will need to make a total of 16 of these squares and you can fasten off and sew in all the ends of the squares and I'll meet you back here once those are prepared. When all the ends are sewn in, you want to arrange your squares to form this large chevron pattern. So once you have that ready, you can begin joining the squares. So I have my four squares here from the far right side of our chevron pattern to join together. You are welcome to use whichever join you prefer. The designer used a whip stitch join, so you would thread a darning needle and you want to use the same color to join to match them up. So when you have two A sides matching together, you would use the A color to join. And here you would use the F color to join those two sides and these two sides. So some of them you might be able to work um, a couple squares at the same time in joining, but you would put your right sides together of your two squares. And I would just go in through the corner spaces of both square to begin. And then just taking the loops and you can decide if you want just the, the farthest away loop on each square to join or if you prefer going under both loops for a nice clean join, you may do that as well. So whichever way you prefer. And then you would just match up the stitches of color A. and continue to work through both thicknesses to join together. So I have my first two squares joined together. Now, while I still have some of the color A left on my thread, I'm gonna take this square and come down the matching side there to connect that square. So I have three squares joined together now. 
And I would take this fourth square using color F and join those two sides as well. So once you have all of your squares joined together in a similar fashion, I will meet you to help you work the edging. Now we're going to work in edging across the top and the bottom of this piece of the squares that we just sewed together. So you're going to take color A and join in the corner at the top with a single crochet. We're going to single crochet across the stitches, so it'll be 15 single crochet. That's two and three. That's 14 and 15 single crochet across the top of the first square plus our corner single crochet. Then in each of these chain two spaces, we'll place a single crochet. So single crochet in this first chain two space, single crochet in the second chain two space. Then we'll single crochet in these 15 stitches across the top of the next square. Fourteen and fifteen single crochet, which we've reached our next chain two corner spaces. So we'll repeat as we did here: single crochet in each of those chain two spaces, fifteen across. So we've done this once. You're going to do it two more times for a total of three times, and I'll join you at that spot. So Worked those three repeats across the top. You should now have reached the center of this piece. And we're going to do a single crochet two together. So in this next chain two space, we'll insert and pull up a loop. And then over to the next chain two space, insert and pull up a loop. So we'll have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through all three loops for the single crochet two together. And then we'll work across this next square, single crochet in 15. So that's two, three, Fourteen and fifteen single crochet and place one single crochet in each of the corner chain two spaces. And we'll do that fourteen times or four times the fifteen single crochet, single crochet in each chain two space. On the fourth repeat, you'll be on your final square, so you'll only need to place the single crochet in the one chain two space. So that should be 135 single crochet across the top of this piece. So then for row two of the edging, we'll turn our work, chain one, and then work a single crochet in each stitch down the row for 135 single crochet. At the end of row two, you can go ahead and fasten off. Then we're going to go ahead and work these two rows of edging along the bottom edge of this piece as well. 